Okay, we're going to graph square roots and cube roots today. Now when we're looking at the graph of the square root function, there's a couple things that happen here. First of all, we have to have a restricted domain because we can't take the square root of negative values without getting into imaginary units, and we don't want to deal with that right now. So our domain has to be x is greater than or equal to zero when we're doing square roots. The other thing that you have to realize is it's assumed that when you're given an equation, y equals the square root of x, that we only want the positive portion. If they want you to graph the bottom half here, they will tell you to graph y equals the opposite of the square root of x. So if there is no sign in front of our square root, it's assumed we're only dealing with the positive. We don't have to worry about the plus minus now because the square root is given to us. When we are doing square root functions, they're going to take on the form y equals a times the square root of the quantity x minus h and then plus k. This should look very familiar from when we do quadratics. a is still dealing with the steepness, h is our horizontal movement, k is our vertical movement. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to sketch the corresponding function y equals a times the square root of x. And you're going to do this by using a table of values. Once you get your table of values out there and your sketch done, you're going to shift that graph horizontally h units, and you have to remember to use the opposite sign, and then you're going to do k units vertically. So here's an example. Now the first one says to just describe how we would graph it, so we do not actually graph this first one. So the first thing we would do is we would sketch the graph y equals 2 square roots of x, because we only want to sketch the y equals a square roots of x. The h would be my 4, the k is going to be my 9, so I'm first going to sketch that. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to shift my graph. Well, h is 4. That tells your horizontal motion. But now remember, we have to think in terms of opposites. So since it's a positive 4 here, I've got to think about moving in the negative direction. So I'm going to shift it left 4 units. And looking at my k, I have a positive 9. Well, with the k, we keep the same sign, so we're going to go up. 9 units. So if it just wants you to describe, you have these two steps. You're going to sketch the y equals a square roots of x, and then you're going to tell me how you would shift it. For this next part, we're actually going to graph this function right here. Then we're going to state the domain and the range. So the first thing we're going to need is graph paper. And if we look at what we just described, we have to sketch our corresponding y equals a square roots of x. So we're going to sketch y equals negative one half times the square root of x. To do that, we're going to make a table of values. Now there's going to be some intelligent values to pick and some not so intelligent values to pick. Since we have to graph the square root of x, I want to pick numbers that I can take the square root of because I want it to be easier. And now remember, my domain has to be restricted to be greater than or equal to zero for this portion right here because I can't take the square root of a negative number. So I'm going to start with zero and then my next perfect square is one. I can take the square root of one. My next perfect square is four and my next perfect square is 9, then I would have 16. I'm going to stop there for now. Now when I go to find my y values, I'm going to plug 0 back into this equation. Square root of 0 is 0, times negative 1 half, and I get 0 back. When I plug 1 in here, take the square root of it, multiply it by a half, and I get negative 1 half. When I put 4 in here, the square root of that would be 2, multiply that by negative 1, and I get, or negative 1 half, and I get negative 1. Put the 9 in there, multiply it out, and I get negative 3 halves. Put the 16 in there, and I get negative 2. So now I'm going to go and very lightly plot each one of those points. And I'm not going to graph my last point because I ran out of room. So now I sketch my graph in here very, very, very lightly. That's my first step. 
second step is I need to look at how I'm going to shift this. Right there, I'm dealing with my H, and you want to think in terms of opposite. So instead of thinking of it as left 5 because it's negative 5, we have to go opposite. So I need to move it 5 to the right, and then my K tells me down 2. Now the easiest way to do this is to take all those points you just plotted and move each one individually according to this right here. So that 0, 0, I'm going to move it 5 to the right and down 2. Now I put that new point in green. That's actually a point of my function. These points in red are not of my actual function I'm graphing. They were the one of my modified. Next, I'm going to go to my point 1, negative a half, and I'm going to move it 5 over and down 2. And then I'm going to plot it there. That's also a point that's actually on my graph. I'm going to do that for all the points that I plotted. Now that I've moved all my points to the right 5 and down 2, I have my real graph. The last part of this one says to state the domain in the range. Now I'm talking about the domain in the range of my actual problem, not this modified domain I did before. That was only for that graph that I sketched initially. So I can do my domain one of two ways. I can look at my equation and see that, you know, I have this square root. And I know that when I do square roots, whatever I have underneath here has to be greater than or equal to 0. So I can set that x minus 5 greater than or equal to 0, add 5 to both sides, and I get x has to be greater than or equal to 5. That's algebraically how you would do your domain. Graphically, you can come over here and you can look at your graph. My graph starts where x is equal to 5 and then it goes to the right, so that gives me x values that are greater than or equal to 5, which is the exact same thing we had up here when I did it algebraically. So for my domain, I would have x is greater than or equal to 5. Next, my range. My range is my y values. That's a little bit harder to do algebraically because we haven't talked about that yet, so I would strictly rely on the graph. And if you look at your y values, the first y value that I'm allowed to have is negative 2. So I know that y is going to be compared to negative 2 somehow. And then as I look at the rest of my graph, my y values are going down. So I want values that are smaller than or equal to negative 2. So that would be my domain and range for this problem. Now we're going to look at graphing cube roots. When we have cubed roots, we don't have to worry about restricting the domain because we don't have problems with negatives. So we're going to look at how do we graph y equals a times the cubed root of x minus h plus k. Notice it's an identical setup to what we just looked at, except for instead of square root, we have cubed roots. And if you look at our two-step process, it's the exact same concept with our process. We're going to sketch the function y equals a cubed root of x, and then we're going to do the shifting again. So graphing square roots and cube roots is almost the exact same thing. Here's going to be our practice one for cube roots. We're going to graph y equals 2 cube roots of the quantity x plus 1 minus 3. Then we're going to state the domain in the range. Now for this one, I'm going to graph y equals 2 cubed roots of x, because I want to graph my modified one first because it's easier. Now when I do my table of values this time, I don't have any domain restrictions, so I need to pick positive numbers, I need to pick negative numbers, and everything in between that you want. Again, when you're doing a cubed root, you probably want to pick numbers that you can take the cubed root of and get whole numbers back from, so you want to pick those perfect cubes. I'm going to start with negative 8, negative 1, 0, 1, and 8, because I know that those are all perfect cubes. When I plug negative 8 into my equation here, I would have 2 times the cubed root of negative 8. Well, the cubed root of negative 8 is negative 2. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4. Do a similar process with negative 1. Plug that in here, multiply it out, and you should get negative 2. When you put 0 in, you'll get 0 back positive 1 will give you 2, 
and a positive 8 will give you a positive 4. Now we need to go ahead and plot those points on our graph. Once you have all those points plotted, you have to remember that this isn't our real graph that we're graphing. This is our modified one. So I can lightly sketch my graph in there, but now I need to do the shifting so I can get my real graph. Now according to my equation, I need to shift one unit to the left, because remember we think in terms of opposites when we're looking at our H, and then I need to go three down. So now when I go to shift each of these points one left, I have to remember I did my scale by two on my X direction, so one left is only half a square. My Y direction I went by ones, so that's still normal. And I'm going to shift each one of them individually, one left and three down. These are going to be my real points, the actual points that I want to keep from my graph. Once I get them shifted, I can go ahead and sketch in a smooth curve. And that would be my actual graph. I also need to now go state my domain and my range. Now my domain is my input values. And remember with cubed roots, I don't have any restrictions. So my domain would be all real numbers. And my range, I can look at my graph. And according to my graph, I can go as far negative as I want. And I can go as far positive as I want. So my range would also be all real numbers for this particular one. Here's two practice problems for you to try. So go ahead and pause the video and see if you can sketch each of these graphs and state their domains and their ranges. The first thing you should have done for this one was sketch to the graph y equals the square root of x. That's what I have here in the red, and I also have the corresponding table of values here. Then, once you got those red points plotted, you should have shifted it four to the left, and you would have gotten this blue line here. Now when we do our domain and our range for this one, we're actually just focusing on the blue one. My domain, well according to my graph, I can only go down to negative four, and then I want values bigger than that. So my domain is x is greater than or equal to negative four. You could have found that algebraically by setting what's underneath your radical greater than or equal to zero, subtract four from each side, and you get x is greater than or equal to negative four. So algebraically you could have found your domain, or you could do it from the graph. Now my range, my range is my acceptable y values. Well, it looks like my smallest y value is zero. So I'm gonna compare my y to zero, and according to my graph, I want values that are bigger than zero. So y would be greater than or equal to zero for this one. Now on the second one, I want to first graph y equals the cubed root of x, which I have here in red, I've got those points plotted. Remember for cubed roots, you have to have the negatives and the positive, because there's no no restrictions with imaginary units happening here. Then, according to my graph, I'm only going to shift each point up four. So I went ahead and I took each point up four, put that in blue. That's my actual graph. So that blue one is my actual answer. Then I need to look at my domain and my range. Well now, according to this, it goes on forever in the x direction to the left and to the right. So my domain would be all real numbers. And my range, it can go up and down forever. So my range would be all real numbers for that one also.